All right, hey, here we go. Episode 18, baby. Fourth in the game. We are here. I'm your host, Roscoe, in the building with my man, Mr. P. Say what's up, man. Hey, what up, people? We in here. Yeah, my old boy, Maul, at the bottom. Tell us what it's about, Maul. What's happening? Hootie hoo! <laughs> <laughs> my White House is burning slow. Oh, even man, baby. Oh, they save it, save it, man. Save it. Now, look, look. <laughs> I know, I know we miss it. We miss it when our own boys here, you know what I'm saying? But we we gonna try to hold it down for them, you know what I'm saying? Fred, we, we miss you, but hey, look, we're gonna put it down for you, brother. We're gonna put it down. Hey, well, I'm stop the show. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, man, look, right now, I just want to get into you know what I want to get into, my sports, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all see my Lakers boys doing what they do in the NBA playoffs now. Everybody was talking trash about my boys, and the yeah you and the Lakers are bringing it, and you yes all the haters in the building and the Lakers are doing what they do, man. I just want y'all opinion on that series and any other series that y'all want to think about, man. Mister P, tell me what's happening. Man, listen, my level of disgust could not be <laughs> higher. <laughs> I do not do not want the Lakers to win. Uh, for the simple reason of all the Laker fans that live in flipping places like Tampa, Florida, yes, that live in places like um New England, well, yes. not really New England, that's mostly Boston, but I'm just saying, all around the country, mm-hmm. you got all these Laker fans who are up on some stuff. But I got to give it to LeBron, um, I got to give it, let, let me take that back, I got to give it to the supporting class. Um, Reeves, uh, Strumpert, uh, flipping who's the guy, Floyd, Joy, Maxwell. Dude, uh, don't, don't, cheat, don't cheat that dude. <laughs> go ahead, don't cheat him. I ain't giving him no, no raggedy nickname. Ma, what, bro. Ma, I mean, go ahead, go ahead, Ma. Go ahead, Ma. Go ahead, Ma. I don't want to. Hey, man, I, I'm like you, man. I love Lakers fans, Yankees fans, Cowboys fans, all in the same boat, man. I love to see them lose, but <laughs> at the end of the day, right now, man, they doing their thing. Uh, LeBron was 38, 39. He mm-hmm. balling right now. Um, so, I mean, I want them to lose this series. Let's not get it twisted. Like, I ain't <laughs> doing for the Lakers. I ain't got no privilege to go to pom-poms in my hand. But I must say, man, I did not see the this going this way, the way the season started with Westbrook and everything else, um, some of the turmoil they had, AD go, coming in and out of the lineup. But man, I, I, I'm I'm gonna give them their propers, man. They're doing their thing, and to be honest, man, if they can get through this series quickly, rest up before either Phoenix or Denver, man. I, once we get to the to the finals, say it. I mean, say it. They got to shot. They, say they got, it. That's what I'm talking. That's all. That's all I need to hear. I man, I ain't no hater, man. So okay, I mean, they they they're doing their thing, but. Wait, uh, excuse me, man. Nah, hell no, nah, dog. Not <laughs> That's what I'm talking even, about. Hey, hey time listen, out. Time out, mean? coach. Ma, let me let me just jump in because I gotta stop you here, man. Mm-hmm. You got flipping Lonnie Walker the fourth going yes. off the of what? 15? Yes. Come on, dog. Hey, I mean, if, you, with you, bro. if you are in the NBA, you can play no matter yeah. if you are 12 or number one. Once you get in the game and show what you can do. Hey man, it's your time to shine. That's what we used to coach. Yeah. Hey, yeah. once you get that opportunity, you gotta use it. You know what I'm saying? A play don't care who make it. Play and he went in there and did his thing, man. Well, this so, is also showing too, not to cut you off, uh, Roscoe. It's also showing that maybe the Golden State dynasty might be coming to an end with this one. I mean, because you, you gotta figure Draymond probably on his way out. Clay Thompson had a couple of knee surgeries, stuff getting a little older. So we might be seeing the end of a dynasty too, mm-hmm. um, and that that's a real thing, you know. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, I'm here for it, man. The playoffs in, in the NBA are always exciting, man. You get it's like a war of attrition, man. Who can outlast who? So that's what's up, man. Shout out as much as it pains me to say this, man. <laughs> much respect to LeBron and the Lakers, Darvin mm-hmm. Ham. They got a first. They, people still don't realize they got a first year coach. They got a first yeah. year ever head coach, and they're doing this, man. So we're gonna see, man. We're gonna see if they can keep it up. I, I know I know another series that I've been keeping my eye on. Don't do and, it. Um, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> no, no, no. I was I was talking don't about Philly, Philly and the Celtics, oh, okay. man. You know what I'm saying? Okay, cool. You feel, Philly, I mean, because everybody, well, you know, with Embiid being the MVP and 
you know, he really was showing that he's supposed to be the MVP and Harden and his beard was getting a little stiff. But they they uh, come come around, so to speak, you know what I'm saying? And they they looking like they're supposed to be there. They're looking like they're supposed to be winning and they're doing what they're supposed to do. That's all I was, that's the series I was going to bring up. Just I, to, I was just going to say, just to jump on this uh, 76ers thing, Embiid is the worst MVP since Joe Kitch. What? <laughs> Come on. For somebody to be an MB, uh, 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 MVP candidate and to perform the way he has, he's finally just showed up today, right? Which was, you know, a big he deal. Yeah. I, but he's always, uh, but that's that's literally my point, right? If you're not really showing up in the playoffs, especially this year when it's like a clear pathway for you guys to make the final when you haven't made it, and for him not to show up earlier, it's kind of a big deal. I, I worry about him as a playoff person. And um, for the first time, even Harden has shown up in the series, so that's kind of giving him a chance. But I, I just question is MB good enough? That's, that's just that's just all you want to comment on that before I'm all jump on this series. Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't think he is is good enough. Is the question for me is not is he good enough? The question is does he have enough dog in him night in and night out to show up and let his play match his talent? Because he's talented out the behind man. Can mm-hmm. shoot it can handle the rock, can pass, can block shots. He, I mean, he's an all-around player, probably one of the best all-around players in the league, but does night in and night out, especially in a seven-game series or in a playoff series, you have to bring it every night. You can't take a night off. And yeah. that's the question with Embiid is, does he have enough dog in him to just say, you know what, I'm seven feet tall, I can do it all, I'm going to take over the game. And we, we haven't seen him yet, so in this opinion, you're right. We haven't seen it from him yet, but he's got the potential to do that. That's a, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, you know, T-shirt All-American, you know what I mean? He he on the bench looking like oh, something. Man. But he, 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 we'll see. They are the one in the series, man. I we, mean, we, still got to count for something. They are they're three and two right now. Yeah, they up. So, I, I, all credit to Harden, all credit to Doc Rivers. They definitely up. But, uh, Maul, I can't let you step out of here. It, it, the segment. Is it, is it getting hot in here? It's a little heat. It's a little. It's, it's a, it's, the heat is like it's nice like and real cool where I'm at. in my it's house. Nice and cool where I'm at. It's nice and cool where I'm at. Yeah, it is. It's nice and cool. It's a nice New York breeze where I'm at, man. <laughs> <laughs> what people don't realize is New York, man, uh, Broadway, the Big Apple, man. The, we got a flair for the dramatic, man. So we down through one right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're going to win these three straight when nobody think we could. How dramatic will it be for a game seven? Uh, I, I think it will be at the Garden. Game seven yeah, in the Garden, the yeah. garden with Spike and all the celebrities sitting mm-hmm. in front court, and we win that game seven. Man, you that's like that? that's 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 a New York ready-made uh, screen screenplay. Hey, Mark, can you show your your cup and whatever you're drinking, man? Because um, I want yeah. some of that. Because yeah, um, I, I need two of them. I'm drinking, it Nick, I'm drinking Nick juice. Mm-hmm. Nick, I don't want none of that. I want no Nick juice. Yeah. No, keep, okay, keep all the Nick juice. No ice, <laughs> Nick's juice. Uh, Julius Randle getting ready to show up. Uh, hell, we might even bring uh, uh, Carmelo back, man. Sign yeah, up. Charlie Ward and all. Jason Starks. Yeah. Star- hey, man. Dave DeBusha. Pat Ewing. Uh, uh, Alan Houston can probably still shoot. We need them all to come back. Matter of fact, Pat Riley to come coach. <laughs> We in there, man. Next time hey. we talk, next time we talk, man, uh, uh, we'll be talking about the Knicks. The Knicks moving on to the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah, moving yeah. on to the yeah. off season. No, they're um, gonna, they gonna be in the locker room telling us a one, two, three, Cancun. <laughs> hey, but well, that's, that's just pure hate, man. Well, I, I heard the the best take is that Jimmy Buckets, Jimmy Butler, is beating <laughs> the Knicks. Is beating the number one seed with some non-playable characters. Mm-hmm. Like this is worse than what the Lakers are doing with Lonnie Walker and Ariza. I mean, and Reeves out there, right? Um, it really is on the like we talk about dog. He's like the anti-MB. Butler is right. He's the anti-Harden. 
the the player that's just gonna show up and you just gonna trust to do their thing. Like we thought Brunson was that dude, right? Brunson, yeah. especially considering what he did, where he was before. He was in um in was it Phoenix? He was in Dallas. He was yeah. in Dallas. What Brunson did before was like, okay, Brunson might have a little bit of butler in him. But when yeah. he met the real deal, it's kind of like I don't hey, know. Man, I'm gonna go ahead and end the conversation about it right now, man. We got Lakers and Knicks in the finals. I'm calling oh, it right I'm now. Calling it. Uh, Roscoe, get yeah, ready to put something, I'll take get that. Ready to put something up. I don't know I'll what it that. is, but put something up. Lakers, Knicks, I'll take that. NBA finals. I'll All take right. That. Before we end this segment, because that is a nonsensical way to end this segment, um, especially with the Knicks part, not the Laker part. Um, I remember when we last talked, the uh, the uh, Denver was up 2 nothing, And I was like, a series don't start until a away team win. And I did say, and I just want to just say, mm-hmm. that when they get back to Phoenix, it's going to be a different story. So it's 2-2. We'll see how it goes from there. Lakers Knicks, man. Lakers, the Knicks. Lakers Knicks in the final. Mr. Opinion, get ready. I mean, uh, Roscoe, get ready to do a whole lot of push ups or something, man, because it's going to cost you. Hey, yeah. let's go to New York because I got some um, some current news topics to dive into. <laughs> Fresh off the press. So you're going to get this probably a little late off the press. Well, not late, yeah. but the day after. But um, Trump has been found. Well, the news story is going out. He's found guilty, but it hasn't been found guilty. He's been found um, liable. He's been found liable, which means that he has used uh, language and words against someone. Ooh. So, what? I guess my question is for you guys as we look into this uh, Trump segment: Will it impact him in a potential run to the White House? No, not at all. Not never. They gonna love him. They love his stinking ass draws. They love him to death, man. It ain't nothing he can say or do that's gonna ruin his followers on him, man. So all this does is add to the mystique. You know, he, you know, he got off because that's what he gonna say. I, I got yeah. off. You know, it. I'm, I, I don't know what they're talking about. They, they witch hunt. So yeah, man, witch I don't hunt. see. Oh, no, I don't see yeah, I don't see. I don't see anything like deterring them from. You know, what I'm saying. Going to the rallies with them red hats on, bro. Well, that's the one thing about this whole case that I um, found interesting, and I think this is what I would tell anybody: watch what you say on the, on TV, because he was basically found guilty for his comments of grabbing by the grabbing yeah. by the uh, pocketbooks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the that's the comment yeah. that kind of you know that they kind of caught him on because he basically did <laughs> what yeah. he. They didn't find him guilty of um, grape or anything. Grape. Yeah, <laughs> um, they found him guilty of, uh, you know, sexual libel and grabbing him by the purses. There you All right. Go. Um, <laughs> now, this is another uh, topic in the news that I found quite interesting. Tucker Carlson, the Fox News uh, firebrand, if you will, yeah. um, who was recently fired has decided to take his platform to Twitter and Twitter. You don't have a deal with Twitter. He's just going to, you know, present his Mm -hmm. on Twitter, his information because he says that's the last source of news because our news sources are uh, tainted. So I guess my, my only thing is, is the idea of a third party site really, or a non-traditional site is viable for news? Like how often do you guys go away from CNN to get your news? I mean, I, I, I get the majority of my news from, you know, uh, Twitter and Facebooks and the Instagrams and stuff, because a lot of people report it faster and they, and basically they link other stories to it and it's, it's accessible. And we got we got to think, man. When Twitter first started, it was the politicians that pushed Twitter. You know what I'm saying? That like that was their form of communication yeah, yeah. with the public. You know, so like everybody going back to Twitter, not going back, but everybody using it for what it is. That's just you know, that's just social media, and that's what social media means. You going there being social, you giving out your opinion. So you know that's. So yeah, I don't see nothing wrong with it. No, I think it's crazy. Not just for news source. I think about me as a kid, you know what I mean? Um, I would have loved to have been able to uh, 
talk to uh Hardy Nickerson, you know what I mean, directly. You know what I mean, watching it. Like, yeah. hey man, Hardy, great job on those tackles for the Tampa Bay Bucks. You're an amazing player. Probably should be in the uh, Hall of Fame. You should have seen Scott Brady or something. Time, time <laughs> I <my best opinion. laughs> Out of all the celebrities oh, and athletes and people we can have Nicholson. access to, <laughs> I mean, you, you you talking late nineties, early two thousands, all the people <laughs> that was popping at that time that we could have had instant communication with at our fingertips. You said Hardy. <laughs> hey man, look, Hardy Nickerson was his name. <laughs> Nickerson. Hey, Hardy Nickerson. That's what he. I mean, I, you asked me uh, hey, who I wanted to talk to. Like, I like Hardy Nickerson, but he would have been way down on my list to say, man, I can't, I can't wait to get on Twitter and see what Hardy so, Nickerson is doing right now. So who you want to talk to? So who would you want to talk to, Mo? I mean, we talking around that time, man. I, I'm looking at uh, celebrities like Michael Jordan. We talking about Tiger. We talking about cats that's global icons. That we said, damn man, like what? What? I wonder what Michael Jordan got going on today. Oh, uh, uh, well, let me check uh, Tiger Woods' uh, Twitter page to see what, what you know what what he into. It definitely wouldn't be Hardy. <laughs> like, come on, man. I mean, I get it. Not All Hardy. politics are local, dog. Like, I mean, what you want me to do? I'm just saying, my me as a jit. That's who I would have wanted to talk to. Come on now. That's hey, man, fair. No disrespect. No, no, no disrespect. He was a baller. Can we all say he was a baller? Yeah, he was a baller. He he, he can't was, take that he, away. He, he he was a hell of a ball player. All but right. he was a he middle like linebacker was... in the NFL. <laughs> his life probably wasn't that interesting, bro. Look, I, he is better than him saying Sammy Piscatelli. So or or uh, uh, I can't even think of a random book. <laughs> hey, Reggie Cobb, Reggie Cobb, uh, Eric, Eric Red, or or uh, Gooch. What was Gooch first name? <laughs> Jeff Gooch. We we can go down the list of saying, man. Nah, I don't, I don't want to follow that dude Twitter. But I probably wouldn't even follow Hardy Nickerson back. I probably want to follow Donald Igwe BK. Yeah, he, hey, that's he, he some weight. <laughs> One of the um, you know, in this. Um, in the current news and the ideas, there's a there's a couple of things I want to get your thoughts on. <laughs> Immigration, the sentence is back at it again, uh, asking if you're not a documented worker, then, you know, obviously you can't uh, work in the state of Florida without legal documentation. Mm -hmm. And also, the kind of combines makes you think of the border crisis. Every time we go on the news, <laughs> the invasion, you know, all these hyperbolic <laughs> words as, you know, Article 42 from Trump <laughs> policies that kind of protected the borders is coming free. What do you think about when you hear run for the border? I think a Taco Bell, <laughs> go get me a Chalupa, <laughs> And, I love uh, you. I ain't gonna lie. I do. <laughs> get me a nacho bell grande for the wife. You know what I'm saying? And probably some churros and a icy blast. That's that's the only thing I think about. I think I bell ordered down, man. I mean, hey, that's, man. that's pretty much it, bro. When we, we talk about <laughs> running for the border. It's Taco Bell and running for the bathroom after you die. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's all you do. I mean, you think about refried beans, you think about uh, uh, the nachos and the cheese. And man, I love it going down, man, but I'm gonna hate it coming out. There you go. Pretty much it. That's the running I think about when I think when, I, when people think about running for the border, running, running the Taco Bell and then running to the bathroom. Bro. One of the uh, all right, so this is the question. Original taco food, like from like a, a traditional Mexican restaurant, mm -hmm. or would you guys have a uh, Taco Bell, like an American style uh, Mexican, a, a Mexican American experience? Which one would you guys take? Is that a real question? He just said, if you get Taco Bell, you gonna be running for <laughs> more know. than just the border. <laughs> and you, and you better have a bidet or something. <laughs> Man, look, I'm getting authentic matches and an incense. All yeah. that. <laughs> I'm getting authentic Mexican food, man. Come on I mean, now. We we we. I, I'm down here in Tampa. Um, Jew down here in Tampa. And when you think about like authentic Mexican food, it don't even taste like Taco Bell. It's a the presentation is different. Yeah. Preparation is different. Yeah. It's a whole different vibe, man. So I, I mean, Taco Bell 
late night after the club before all these places were open 24 hours yeah. and everything else taco bell was the spot like you you ate taco bell pretty much out of necessity yeah but if you got to choose if you tell me left is authentic mexican and right is taco bell yeah i'm going to to the authentic mexican only because i mean if you're gonna do it you might as well do it their way right mm -hmm. you know? Anyway. Well, one of the things before we get out and go to the uh, you uh, uh, next topic, Ma, is that the Mexican drinks are pretty fat. Mixed drinks are pretty fantastic. I just want to yeah. name that. I just want to name so that. Yeah. You know? Not only that, man, but Cinco de Mayo was last week, man, and and they were the, and all the stuff I saw uh, related to Cinco de Mayo, they was they was up. There was yeah. Coronas. It was tacos. Those second Mexicalis. I'm gonna be honest you know? with you, man. You know, if you're going to get authentic Mexican food, you're getting a real Mexican experience, man. You're getting the music, you're getting the dancing, you're getting mm -hmm. serenades, you're getting all of that. So definitely authentic Mexican, because it, it's a whole vibe, man. Yeah. The whole vibe is, is is authentic Mexican, the culture. I mean, yeah. it's, it's just a vibe, man. But speaking of vibes, man, uh, uh, just looking at what's trending right now, man, the last couple of days, uh, I want to hit on Tiger Woods, man. Um, <laughs> Tiger Woods, you know, he was like the global icon, the, the one of the richest athletes in the world. Apparently, you will follow him on Twitter. <laughs> I will follow Tiger on Twitter. That's T Dub. You better recognize. And, and listen, man, Tiger Woods, um, he he ain't the same old lame Tiger Woods anymore, man. Um, the story man, is just out of control. Um, and I want y'all to listen. I know y'all follow. I know people that's watching probably follow, man. But just listen to how he broke up with his girl. He told her, hey, pack your bags. We getting ready to hit it. We going on a trip. Apparently they did this all the time. I mean, Tiger Woods, he got probably got yeah. three or four jets. Like, okay, mm -hmm. we'll jump on the plane and go to Paris for dinner and be back home by nine o'clock. Pack your bags, man. We're going to hit it for the weekend. Have a good time. Spend a little quality time uh, together. Meet me at the meet, meet me at the, at the airport. His lady got to the airport and <laughs> His lawyer and his homeboy said, yeah, he left already. <laughs> not only did he leave already, they locked her out of the house that she just packed up and left from. <laughs> Hit her with some papers and said, yeah, you ain't going to hear from Tiger no more. He's out. <laughs> Goldstein Esquire. I'm not, I'm not, That's clear. I'm not, I'm, I'm not celebrating anybody's heartbreak. I know the young lady's probably, I mean, extremely torn up by this whole thing. Of course. But we all have to admit that's the most extra way to break up with somebody <laughs> out of speed in a long time since new jack city we all know what happened on new jack city yeah look with Nino brown but man mr opinion roscoe man let me know what y'all think about the way not that he broke up with him. we don't know the the, the 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 intel on the relationship but how gangster is it or was it for him to let all his partners and his lawyers do the work for him and just be out Look, the, the the way the I would say his maturation in his breakups have become better. He a long way from Perkins. Long way from Perkins. <laughs> long way from getting hit with golf clubs and crashing his car. All I'm saying is, man, like you you have to be a savvy M, you know, whatever, to pull that off. I mean, to literally you have to have several people on your squad. And coordinate that at that time to pull all that off, man. To to have the paperwork ready, <laughs> it's beautiful. Like he's, man, listen, he, you know, what I'm saying he slid into it like you could serve. You know what I'm saying? People always say teamwork make the dream work. He literally yeah. had a team of people to get together to say, man, not only. <laughs> Like, man, I'm finna break up with her. Nah, bro, we finna break up with her. Yeah, we finna break up with her. Like, we, we, finna, we, we finna break up with her. Hey, it's going down two days. Somebody at the house changing the locks. The boy at the tarmac. The, the, the airplane pilot pulling off of her, watching, it, watching him hit the runway. Like, it was, it, it was beautiful. Hey, it, it remind me of Ocean's Eleven, man. You, man. It, 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 it's just that type, you know, like, you got to think, Tiger Woods is probably somewhere in, in, on the beach with a Mai Tai oh, and, and got a message to my son, it's done. Like, he's a mob boss, you know it what I'm like saying? It was like a hit. Like, she literally got hit. Like, hey, man, just call me when it's over. Yeah. All right, so picture this. 
<laughs> this is why this is why it's a strikeout in Hollywood, a screenwriter's strike. Because you got stuff like this that kind of write itself. I put this story in the chat GPT, ask them to spin back. It's yeah. gonna be a great movie or TV oh, yeah. show episode. Oh, yeah. What you want? <laughs> Man, the only thing, the only thing we deciding is who playing Tiger and who playing the girlfriend. That's it. It's already written. Like oh, already really? written who, who playing who. Man, and then you gotta think about, I mean, we are in all probably had our heart broken before we didn't all had a relationship that we didn't want to come see come to an end. But think about your partner saying, Hey man, he don't want to be with you no more. The other partner saying, Hey man, you, you locked out of the house. And you just watching the plane take off while you standing, while you standing on the runway with your bags, thinking y'all going to go get some PT together on the island. Hey. That's be heartbreak hotel, bro. That's be heartbreak hey. hotel. What if you had a streamer coming off the plane saying, it's done, son? It's hey, done. Man. Imagine it's how, over, imagine man. how, but, but not only that, think about how, how devious in the mind you got to be to say, all right, fellas. Let's sit down at this table and plan this out. Like you, wait, 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 hold on, time out, time out. I only want to say maybe not so devious considering <laughs> he paid a, a hundred to hundred and ten million million to his ex wife. So I that's a, yeah. Yeah. I'm saying devious because during the time they were planning this, he was also still currently in a relationship uh, with her and yeah. faking like everything was all good. Like, you <laughs> to the point that she's willing to go to a, a plane yeah. ticket. Yeah, he, knew yeah. he knew damn well when she got to that tarmac, his homeboy was finna say, yeah, nah, this ain't finna happen. <laughs> this ain't, no, this ain't like, he mm. probably was on the phone with her. Think about it. He probably was on the phone with her, chopping it up like, yeah, baby, when we get there, <laughs> we'll chop a little bit. I already got dinner reserved. Like he really was like playing it out and knowing all the time he get ready to hit it on. Him. Like, come on, man, that's that's cold. Hey, that reminded me of the uh, uh, Orange Juice Jones when he was like, "Look, man, I already got your bags packed. You know what I'm saying? You take my husband puppy wear, brother, and y'all can hit the dough." Hey, man, I'm out of there, man. And, and, and speaking of speaking of on, on a much more serious note, man, Tiger, uh, I ain't gonna say we gonna invite you to the picnic, bro, but we just might save mm -hmm. you a plate now because no. you might be. I mean, yeah, Mr. P Marosco and Mr. Pinion kind of on the fence, but I'll at least save you up to go play, bro. I'll you put can ride by and listen to the music. Hey, man, I'll, put your, I'll put you a scoop of mac and cheese or a scoop of potato salad or something on the side and wrap it up as a four for you because you might be you might you you might be coming back uh, to the hood a little bit. Nope. But on a, on a serious note, man, I, I was reading, you know, following Twitter, like Twitter, where you know where we get that instant those instant news sources. Matter of reason, man. I don't know if anybody really remembers, but in 2021. He was a punter from uh, San Diego State. I mean, uh, San, yeah, San Diego State drafted in the fourth round, which almost never happens to a punter. Got a, got a, a cannon on his on, on attached to his right leg, and he punted the ball out of the stadium. And dude was drafted. I mean, think about being a punter, being drafted, man. You on the highest of highs, like you feeling like, oh man, I'm there, I'm in the league. And then he was accused of um, a, 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 a game. Not only just, I mean, all was terrible, but a game on campus. Um, only to find out now in the last couple of days uh through evidence and, and the prosecutor and some other some other the da and everything else that man they're saying all the footage all the camera footage all the cell phone footage everything that they have right now is saying man dude wasn't even on the scene wow like, not only did That's he crazy. not do it not only did he not do it he wasn't, he even. wasn't even there. He wasn't. That's even crazy. There. That's crazy, man. man. So, uh, Mr. Pena, Roscoe, man, uh, talk a little bit about maybe the impact that not only this has had on this dude's potential earnings in the NFL, man, but just in life, period. Like, he'll never be the same again yeah. in any interpersonal relationship he has with any any woman because he, he'll be skittish, man. This kind of takes me back to the the episode recently with uh, Michael Irvin, right? Um, when he was accused of something that, you know, when the cameras finally came out, it was just kind of like, I never even talked to this person or did anything to her and with eyewitnesses around and still. But this is to another, I only just say it has to be some type of law or something that protects the accused in this situation to some degree. You know but what I'm saying? Not only that, but but what happened to? And I know this is like a cliche, is is you know in the con in the Constitution, and people say it when it, when it, when it fits. But whatever happened to 
innocent until proven guilty, man. Whatever happened to social media, um, dude. Due yeah. diligence, social media, definitely. But whatever happened to due diligence and letting all the evidence um, be submitted and not passing judgment on people, man, because you people just jump to conclusions. And, and sometimes, it, sometimes it's warranted, sometimes it's not. But just jumping to conclusions and hitting social media and before you know it, man, the dude is convicted and he's he his his career is over, man. Uh, Roscoe, give me your opinion on that, man. I, I would say that it's it's um it's very mentally like just disturbing to you, if, even if you he get a chance to get back to the NFL and it never be the same. He, be the same. He, even even if he he has a significant other, you know what I'm saying? And if he he you know you get that that time where you be like, man. If I get in an argument with this person where they accuse me of something, because I already got a rep, even if I even if I'm innocent, I already got a rep. So that's just gonna look bad anyway. If I do anything, if I argue, if I get a D, you know what I'm saying? If I, you know, all types of yeah. goofy stuff, man. It's it's all it's all in your head, and he's still gonna be guilty to some people simply because they didn't oh, read the whole story. That point. I yeah, was just about to make that point is yeah. wherever he goes, if you're in a restaurant, you're yeah. at church, you at a game, yeah. people some somewhere somebody's going to be whispering to the person next to him. Mm-hmm. Like, didn't he? Didn't, didn't wasn't he accused of some of doing something mm-hmm. that's, that's ridiculous? So it's something he'll never be able to wash off, yeah. man. But you know, hopefully, hopefully, um, in this this country and this world of second chances, man, he'll get a he'll get a possibility. To um to 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 re- I can't even say redeem himself because I didn't do nothing. He didn't yeah. do anything, but um hopefully he'll get a chance, man. But but you know, ho- hopefully hopefully someone will get it will, will get a young man a shot. Um and then um one of the other things um uh, that that really kind of has been piquing a lot of uh, a lot of people's interest, getting a lot of you know trending on Twitter, trending on IG, is the swimsuit issue. Um, um, we're all older now, so the swimsuit issue ain't it, it might not really be a thing for us. We don't, yeah. we ain't you know going to pick up the latest Sports Illustrated swimsuit in- issue. But Angel Reese, man, the Bayou Barbie, um, uh, the world's uh, W, uh, excuse me, women's college basketball superstar, was on the cover, man, and uh, people. Uh, or, or amid some people saying, "Oh, is, is it exploitation?" Some people saying, "Oh, how can you take them serious with you know wearing skimpy bathing suit?" Yeah. Um, it is what it is, man. This is 2023, man, and, and, and the women's sports are, are, are big now in some areas. So, Mr. Opinion Roscoe, uh, give me your take on, on Angel Reese, the swimsuit issue. Is it good for women's sports? Bad for women's sports? You know, what what, what do you all think? I would say that. Um... If if you are comfortable in your own skin and it's not risque, you know what I'm saying, you're not busting it wide open like you on uh, you know, uh what's the Playboy and all that stuff there, man. I say go for it, because it's a bathing suit. And right. Right. you know, we go to the pool, we go to the beach, we see it all the time. So it's not something that's like, oh my god, why she got that on? She she this is her 15 minutes. And with those 15 minutes, she's oh, using it. Minutes. You know what I'm saying? And not only is she using it, she's she's using it the right way. And I I don't see nothing wrong with her being in the bathing suit, being on the magazine. And if she's still talking that good talk about, you know, being a good teammate, being a good basketball player, being a good role model for these other young ladies, as long as she's still doing what she needs to do in the classroom and on the court, hey man, sky's the limit, man. You know, she could do she can do no wrong for me right now. So No, I and I I think I'd be remiss if I didn't say we've seen it go left. We've seen an athlete go from just doing normal swimsuits to going to those further risque things. So I guess that's what the other side of it. I hope it doesn't go that way for, well, let me start to say my hope. You know what I mean? I don't personally want to see that, but I know, you know, I'm not trying to judge anybody for what they do, but I'm just saying me personally, I don't I don't want it to go that way, especially in terms of seeing our athletes in that way. I, I, I like seeing them in confident in their body, empowered. And actually, the th- reason why I'm paying attention isn't because mm-hmm. of her body, it's because of her athletic accomplishments. That's how I was introduced to right. whether it be Angel Reese or Olivia Dunn. So that was just kind of my take on it. Is it a good thing? I would say yes. Get paid, get money, get exposure. Um, 
but also do I personally want to see too much exposure? I would say for me, no. Um, but I do want to just mention real quick before I, before I give up the mic. Do y'all remember Tyra Banks back in the day? <laughs> we was that, younger. That, but, but so, the thing is, that was her job. It was, She's it, was a a polka, it was a polka dot bathing suit. I remember yeah. that. Look at you. Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> you Babe, Go ahead. Do y'all remember King Magazine? I remember King Magazine. Uh, yeah. So it, it, if Angel right. Reese was busting it down in King Magazine, then that would be like, all right, you know, that's what and and, and, and and before we end this topic, man, I, I want to say this. Um, we, we talk about um, those magazines. We talk about uh, video vixens and all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm hoping that she's got a strong enough team around her to realize that in doing all the things she's doing, NIL deals, um, swimsuit modeling, all the stuff she's doing, is to stay grounded enough to say, I got to keep it um semi-appropriate because she is a role model for a lot of young ladies um, yeah. whether she wants to be or not not only is she a role model for a lot of young ladies she made it out the hood uh, uh, excellent basketball player making money there's also a lot of people who are waiting for that slip up to say i told you mm -hmm. i told you she wasn't who everyone thought she was we knew she was going to go left the spotlight got to her head she got too big for a bitch so hopefully um, she got. She has a good enough team around her that can do things like this. Um, uh, that that will um, accelerate and glorify women's sports, but also keep it um, at the level of man. She's a she. You no, know, despite all the stuff that old people or older people might think is um too much or out of bounds for an athlete. Um, there, there's a lot of people that's waiting for the downfall, man. So she just yeah. got. You got to keep it together. Keep balling, because as long as she keep balling, she'll be all right. But she got it next year. Um, if LSU go uh, uh, one in twenty three for whatever yeah. uh, God forsaken reason, it ain't gonna it ain't gonna be the same movement. So no. as long as keep it in perspective, and um and, and keep being a role model for the young ladies, because she is that. I was I was I just want to add to that to that same topic because you said everybody's looking for the downfall. Not everybody, but there's some but, people. Yeah, I'm gonna say it is it's a young lady out there right now that is doing great. And everybody remember her, Sakari Richardson. Mm -hmm. She just won, you know what I'm saying, in the Diamond League, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? She ran a, she she whooped who she needed. Yeah, everybody. and and she's quietly coming back and doing what she's supposed to do the first time. You rebuild she's rebuilding her image. She rebuilding her image. So it's you can like fall down and you know the oh, yeah. whole thing. You can you can Absolutely. fall down. You can you can make mistakes and everybody's gonna be on you. Everybody's gonna be on your head. But she kept working and now she's back up. But it's it goes to show that no matter what, you know what I'm saying, you still got that opportunity to be that same role model. And now hopefully she has learned from her mistakes and everybody else that was watching her before learned from her too. So that's what I just no doubt, to add to no that. doubt, no doubt, no doubt. So. I got the question of the week. All right, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Back in 1993. Oh, man, in the box. 1993, <laughs> Christmas time. That was a long time ago. We was, it was it was the So So Deaf Christmas album. We was introduced to these young men, and they was doing the players anthem, you know what I'm saying? And it was just like, oh, man, who is these guys? You know, they like the outcasts. So then they came out in 94 and they hit us with the Southern playlist of Cadillac Funky Music. You see, y'all don't think I can say that that fast. But they hit us with that. It was like, oh man, then you know what I'm saying the whole movement hit us. And that was that was the same time, you know, we were still, you know, teenagers, we were still coming to ourselves, and they had a message and they could rhyme and it was funky and it was good. Then there was all there was all like almost undergroundish. Not very popular, but just you know, some people heard of them. Then, then boom, you know, they came out with a criminal. Out, you know, they come out. We talking about Outkast, by the way. So they come out with all these songs. Everybody know them. You know, the Hey Yas, and they got the cartoons and Big Boy. They, they they everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So everybody know Outkast. Everybody love Outkast. That's one of my favorite groups of all time. So my question of the day of the week is: What is the, one of the most underrated Outkast songs? I'll, I'll, I'll let Mr. Opinion kick us off. 
right, I'm I'm happy to kick it off because well the thing is it, it ain't the fact that was underrated because they have so many songs that are rated, mm-hmm. especially in our circles as well. You know what I mean? Being Southern hip hop dudes um, who grew up in this time when you know this is the most popular genre for us, but I land on. Um, a song they did with Witch Doctor, who was also part of the uh, their clique, the Dungeon Family, and it's called There's Only One. And it just talks about, um, you know, God, the idea of spirituality and going forward. I think it really exemplifies oh, who Outcast yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know, I don't want to sing it because I just destroy <laughs> everybody else. So I just actually look it up. <laughs> I sound like Maul just did not. <laughs> he didn't do that. He didn't do that. What you talking about? That wasn't me. That was me. That was me. That was me. That was me. Be in the back. Yeah, yeah. So that's the one that, that kind of just jumped, jumped right out to me as far as just that ain't really out there, but it's just a phenomenal song. You know what I mean? And a phenomenal album by Witch Doctor, uh, a Swats Healing. Hey, man, that's a dope song. And uh, to your point, man, to us and in, in our group, in our circle, none of them are really underrated. When we talk yeah. about underrated, we talk about underrated to other people because they're yeah. all rated to me. Like, I've never in my life came to an outcast song <laughs> if I'm on shuffle or whatever. Where I said, no, nah, I'm going to skip that one. That one yeah. nah, I'm gonna <laughs> that's, that's, not, that's not a real thing. But when I think about, man, like underrated songs and um, sometimes people hear, I started to show off by saying, hootie hoo. Mm-hmm. Some people think that Master P and the No Limit Soldier started that. Some people think, oh, man, that started in X, Y, Z. I know it's it's, it's got a, old, a whole different urban dictionary meaning now. Mm-hmm. But then the song Hootie Who, when uh, 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 Andre came in and he was on the nice monotone flow, and then when that beat dropped and Hootie Who came in, mm-hmm. I was like, man, yo, the, the hairs on your arm stood up when you heard that beat drop, when you heard that Hootie Who. And then, you know, for us, Man, we was in the hallway in school, hootie hooing people. Mm-hmm. We was on the football field, hootie hooing. Somebody mm-hmm. make a big hit in the game, and you hear ten. You be in the club, you be in the club, and you still, and you know, something happened, or you see one of your partners across the way, hootie hoo, and then you see him look around like, okay, I know the call. Yeah. So when I when I think about an underrated song, man, it's hootie hoo for me because it was like a real slang that was in our in our vocabulary who who was a real thing man it was like a real movement so uh, it, and even to this day man if i can't get somebody attention and i call their name a couple times i hit them with that hootie who and they turn around and look mm-hmm. you got their attention so for me it's hootie who man okay what about well, you <laughs> for me i'm 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 gonna cheat a little bit i got like several of them and i know and i know when i go through them y'all gonna y'all gonna agree with me and we're going to reminisce a little bit. So my, my first one is Crumbling Herb. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's it's mellow. It's cool. You know what I'm saying? It's that it's that vibe. You know, that that that, that, that same vibe. That it, it, it's basically the vibe of the whole first album. Like that same vibe. Only it's so, I, you know, I can't go too far. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you're singing it right now in your head. You know what I'm saying? Crumbling Herb. All right, now. My second one, my second one is awesome because of the lyrics and just the beat Babylon mm. from AT Aliens, man. The, the way it just come on, just yes, hit you in the face. I came into yeah, this, you know, it has like, a- yeah, you know, so Babylon, man, that was, that was one of those ones like, okay, but a lot of people don't bump that. A lot of people don't play that in their outcast shuffle. Right. And another one, another one, a Quimini. Now, a Aquamina to me is 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 one of those ones that that they you show they grow because it started off, you know what I'm saying? They flow and they going back and forth, then the beat stop. Then you like, all right, what are they about to do? Then they hit us in the face again. Then the next verse after that is just immaculate and amazing. Wow. You like, oh man, just stop. Like, come on, you're doing too much. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So it, it it that that was that song, but the 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 one for me that I I like. Right now, that I, you know, what I'm saying, I just be currently bumping, man. It's, it's gangster shit. <laughs> like the beat, the lyrics. Dre went off. Big Boy went off. You know what I'm saying? Gangster shit is probably one of the most underrated Outcast songs that you don't hear unless you are an Outcast head. 
And I could say it verbatim, but I don't want to because I don't want to get us, you know, copyright and all that stuff there. If you ain't heard it, go listen to it, man. Yeah. We're going to give you a bunch of gems right go now. Tell, so, man. Go to your Apple Music, go to your Spotify, man, and hit them. I was, and, and I, and not to jump on this uh, too long, but I definitely would be remiss if I didn't think about my most impactful outcast song this was what you're getting ready to say i think i know it go ahead <laughs> but for me personally i'm talking about like whenever my head i need to get my head right and you know or if even if things are going good sometimes but definitely when i want to get my head right and kind of get a refocus about myself i play the 13th floor mm, yeah the 13th floor really okay. you know what i mean because it what what it codifies for me uh fat turns the tear drop Turn the yeah, flap so yeah. the open the bitches turn the scab. Right, yeah, right. right. yeah. Come, all, it, it just kind of it centers me. Time. It centers me. It centers, yeah. me. It centers yeah. me in a way that I don't think probably any almost any other song probably outside of some sizzler songs, but it really centers me um in a very real way. So like consistently through since that song has dropped throughout my life when I needed some like good old fashioned centering. Is one of the songs that really centers me. But Ma, what what what, what you yeah. thought I was gonna I don't say? I know it's what he about to say. Go ahead. I, you know what, man? And I, I thought you was gonna go there, and that's that, that's a hell of a choice too, man. But when I think about like the music we like and what we do and who and who we are, and it's not underrated, but I think it never got enough credit, man. Get up, get out, and get something. Yeah, because that's not only great. was it not only was it cast, it was the goody on it too. Yeah, so that was kind of like their introduction to the world. When mm -hmm. you think about CeeLo, uh, uh, big gift coming in and giving them giving that gift, man. Um, uh, you know, just the the message. If you think about how long ago that song was, it's still relevant in 2023. If they wrote that song today. All those lyrics will still apply. You don't have to change anything, man. You talk about families and being disappointed to your family and, and motivating and man, mm -hmm. get up. Don't let the days of your life pass by. You got to get a second up. chance. Something. Don't spend all your time trying to get high. We think about what's going on in this in, in society, man, with kids and drugs and pills and opioids and, and everything else going on in the world. And you think about some cats in 1995 saying, man, get up get out and get something don't let the days of your life pass by get up get out and get something don't spend all your time getting high think about mm -hmm. how relevant wait, 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 Ma, you gotta finish that get up get out and get something only you can do for you and i you know what i mean yeah. the, that think, about it, man. Yeah. think about how relevant that chord is in 2023 bro like we literally in the world i work with kids and i'm telling them man you gotta we, at some point you gotta do something for yourself don't depend on nobody else man you can't smoke your life away not that they all do but man you can't smoke and drugs and chill your life away you gotta get up mm -hmm. get out and get something bro oh, and the video hard. too Ma. don't forget the video the video yeah. man it's that song is so I ain't going to say underrated, but it never got enough credit for being not only a dope song, but the message. The message is what did it for me. I think a lot of these songs, it, it is. All of them. The all messages of them. are, it's more than the song. Even though, you know, it's catchy, boom, boom, mm -hmm. they do all the, the things. But also behind the things, I think that really, for me at least, and and sound like for y'all too. I actually I know for y'all, yeah. it's the it's yeah, the yeah. Yeah. in yeah. the songs and the words. And that, th th them songs hit. Not only did they hit, man, but they hit home in a different type of way, man. They hit home. The music just hit and it hit home. The beats, the southern draw, all that stuff, man. And, and, and man, if you haven't listened to uh, Southern playlist of Cadillac music, or Quimbana, AT Aliens, man. Uh, uh, download them, man. Go back and listen to them. The Dungeon oh, Family, man. too. Oh, man. Yeah, that's, that's hey, go, back, go back through the whole archive, man, and, and, and re-familiarize yourself with it. Because 30 years later, I can still rap the lyrics like they came out yesterday. I remember yeah. the CD covers, and I know y'all remember this. I know mm -hmm. we've done this for a minute, but I want to make sure I mention this part. You remember when the CD covers had the lyrics inside, and yeah, we yeah. used to get the lyrics and read along before, uh -huh. before we even knew the song. We reading along, put the lyrics was in the back of the CD case and reading it, and we think we know what they said, but he didn't really say that. He said something else. Like, yeah. 
Oh man, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Shout man. out to Organized Noise. We go way dungeon family, man. Them cats. Oh, they. I'm telling you, man. Uh, remember the, the Source Awards when you know they got disrespected. Uh, uh, Source of BT was one of them, and, and Big Boy got the mic Fuck when they boys. finally won. He finally, they finally won, and he said, "The mm-hmm. South got something to say. That's all I got to say." Oh, they the mic on. That was the start of Southern uh, hip hop. Oh, yeah. Hip hop, man. Them cats started though. So shout out to uh, Andre Three Sacks. Shout out Big Boy. Shout out Organized Noise and Dungeon Family, man, because they they never really got the respect that they would do yeah. as a unit. Um, I know it's a lot of units out there, but that unit, man, it's a lot of cats out right now that they paved the way for it, man. So shout out to them cats. I'm gonna bust some cats when we get done tonight. <laughs> so since we since we got the question of the day out of the way, now what is something that you and only you care about? All right, so I'm gonna jump on this. I got a, a big thing popping this weekend. Actually, I just um you know, I just realized on the humbug that uh, the the Rays are coming to NYC. You know what I mean? And it's a, a it's a drive. What well, it's a drive I can do. So uh, I'm going down to New York this weekend, um, New York City, and I'm gonna check out the Rays. I hit up one of my homeboys who live in New York. He's gonna be uh, available to hang out. So we're gonna go catch the Rays. I got some nice uh, upper upper level tickets. Uh, Cause tickets, yeah. it's, it's not the same price. Yeah, as the trap. Yeah, yeah. the trap. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Cause it's some upper upper level ticket ticket. Ain't, no, like, ain't no five dollar Fridays in the yeah, ain't, it's, uh, ain't gonna happen. Well, it's somehow in the bleacher seats, but I like nah. I want to be sitting down. I want to appreciate the stadium. Yeah. Like let's say if I lived out there, I would go to the bleachers. But I actually want to appreciate the stadium. So I got some upper upper level eighty dollar tickets. Upper, upper level $80 tickets. But <laughs> well, okay. I'm going to enjoy myself, man. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it'll be my first time seeing uh, Yankee Stadium. Um, and I haven't been in New York in about 10, 15 years. So it should be cool. That's what's up, man. I hope the Rays get a dub for you, man. For me, um, this might sound old manish, but I mean, you are old, you are old dog. I mean, hey, that, I, I ain't gonna run from it. <laughs> what's, what's really, really important to me is only and and only me, man. Is my grass is probably the greenest on my block, bro. <laughs> For real, my grass made it come back. Oh man, hey, listen, listen to me, bro. My wife be looking at me like I'm crazy, like this fool water in the grass almost every night. He out there cutting and edging and and, and sowing seeds, and I'm like, man, I just I just want to you're in a secret war with your whole neighborhood, huh? Hey, listen, man, I wish I wish that we had one of those yard of the month competitions, man, because I I'm going for it, bro. You like, just start one. You just start one. Hey, we got one of those in our neighborhood. Hey, listen, sometimes when I'm riding home, either I'm leaving or I'm coming, I'll look at one of the neighbor's yards and be like, man, that dude grass is brown as hell. And I feel proud, like, man, my grass is green, bro. So, I mean, that's one thing, man, as I even got older, man, it's the simple things that make us happy, right? So I'm happy that my green, my grass is green. It's getting lush and thick. It's summertime. The heat getting ready to. I'm getting ready to battle the heat. Yeah, the heat. I bet you know, like yeah, it's it's really, really really to the heat. Yeah, yeah, battle. I'm a fight. I'm a fight like hell. But <laughs> it really, really matters. Probably to me and only me that man, my grass is green right now, bro. I'm, I'm happy for you, Mom. I'm yeah, happy for you. I'm happy. The yeah, HOA is happy too. They are happy too. <laughs> I don't want to get no. Uh, don't let me catch you in the street notices because your grass is. And our HOA is serious, man. It's a dude that ride around on the golf court with a clipboard and the flashlight, and he ain't playing no games, bro. They see you, if your mulch, if your mulch got debris in it, uh, if your grass is brown, if you got uh, your shrubs ain't trimmed, they hit you, man. So my yard. My shrubs, my grass, that I mean, nobody else in the whole world. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real. My wife might not even care that much. But <laughs> I really care, man. It's really, really important to me, man. <laughs> you should to definitely me. step to it next time. Hey man, I need an award for my stuff yeah, now. Anyway, you might step to it. Hey, I see you print one out and give it to yourself. <laughs> hey, listen, man. I'm gonna go to Home Depot tomorrow and buy one and draw my face on it. <laughs> and I might sign my HOA name on it just because. <laughs> There you go. Well, the, the, only, the, the only thing that 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 cares that I care about right now, without going into uh, much detail, is that uh, I got a bunch of free time now, man. 
And and you know you you don't you don't appreciate your time until you until you lose it. And yeah, once you get that free time back, man, yeah. it's it's a great feeling. I reclaim my time. Yes, it's a, it's a it's a great feeling, and I'm looking forward to the summertime, to the end of school, to where I can just you know you know be with the kids and be with the wife, and you know just spending that that time that I was you know in that abusive relationship with with them, you know. So that's 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 what I care about right now, man. I'm I'm free and I'm happy, baby. Well, you know, you listen to the older cats, even though we old, but we probably middle. Yeah, we are the older cats. What you yeah, mean? we are the older. We, cats. we middle age. Let's be honest. Uh, maybe uh, this is out. Don't get me sidetracked. But yeah. <laughs> you know, y'all almost sent me on a tangent. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but y'all, y'all always say you can't get your time back, man. So you know, when you said spending time with my my wife and kids, and even time for yourself, That's right? About, man. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Man. Right now, at this point, man, in life, where we at right now, man, quality of life. The quality of your life, man, spending time with your kids and your family and doing things, making memories, man. People always talk about life is about making memories. Yeah. Man. We miss a lot of that. We all work extremely hard at what we do in our profession, and we spend probably more time away from home than we should have, probably got in arguments with the wives and miss uh, the kids, uh, recitals and games mm-hmm. and practices, sacrificing for other people and other kids. And and I, I just went through that Jew where you know I we I retired from doing something I had done for ten years and man I, I enjoyed the hell out of just waking up with no real responsibility other than man what can I do to engage with my family and my friends and everything else man it ain't nothing like it bro you going to enjoy yeah. it man yeah I'm looking look like you say making memories man you know I got a cruise coming up we going to Mexico yes, you know sir. taking my kids on the boat for the first time yeah. and. You know what I'm saying? We 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 gonna do a whole bunch of summering. You you feel me? So look for the look for look for the Roscoe's to be on the road to a city near you. Roscoe's hey, on the road. Hey, hey listen, man. Hey, make sure hey. you film it. Upload it to the fourth in the game. Oh, hey man, man, have all the fun you can, man. Enjoy it, man. Take a lot of pictures, man. Enjoy them precious moments, oh, and don't man. look back, bro. Once you, because I'm gonna be honest with you, once you go from not having a free time to having a free time. Ain't no going back, bro. No, Ain't bro. no going back. It's like, it's like bro, when, you, when you get off the yard, man, you say, yeah. yeah, bro, I can't. It's no way I can do that anymore, man, because I ain't seen the other side now, bro. The, yeah. I, the light is on. I can't go back to being confined to not having a free weekend and being uh, at whatever it is you were doing, these extended, ridiculous amounts of hours. Nah, ain't no going back, bro. You going yeah. forward, and whatever else is in the rearview mirror, shut the deuces out of it and keep it going, bro. All day. Well, look. Gentlemen, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure to have y'all on this 18th episode of Fourth in the Game. Fred, I'm sorry you missed out. Next week, we'll we'll give you a little extra time to give you a little opinions about everything else that you hate. But right now, man, it's 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 a, it's great to be here. It's great to have uh good friends, and it's great to share, like you say, make good memories and stuff, man. So subscribe. Watch, tell your friends, tell your enemies, Master tell Master. whoever, tell your, your, your newborn, tell them to watch. Put, 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 look, put, play this for newborns and just sit down and let them watch us. You ain't got to watch, let the newborns watch it. You know what I'm saying? We entertain kids by hey, proxy. Man. Not, not only that, man, you ain't even got to watch it, man. Just turn it on if you're doing, if you got your honeydew list or you're playing your video game you or go. whatever you're doing, man, smoking your fine cigar or having you a nice little sip or something, man, just turn hey, it man, on. Hey, I like talking about your own life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. Just so, turn it on and listen to us, man. So for 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 my man, Mr. Opinion, Maul, and Fred not here, I'm Roscoe. The 18th is in the building. It's in the bag. Peace out. We'll see y'all later, people. Peace. Don't hang up, Fred.